Hello and good evening. Um, just wanted to drop in with you this evening to look back at our little Easter ornaments that we worked on uh, yesterday. And I wanted to show you, uh, just to give you an example, the little um, plaque that we worked on, the little Dollar Tree plaque that we worked on that I stenciled and added the greenery and then went back and added the little carrots that came from Dollar Tree, added the little Dollar Tree ribbons on there, made the little bows. Um, and then whenever I thought I was done and it just looked like it needed something else, that's when I went back and added the little bunny tail and the carrots. And what that did was that tied in the orange and green up there in the bows and it just really finished this project off it just when I look at the before when I thought I was finished <laughs> and then the after after I added the bunny tail and the little um, carrots then it just made such a world of difference and it's almost like I didn't realize I needed it until I put it there and saw how the colors just popped. Um, so that's always fun to see that happen. So if you're just like in doubt, just step away from it for a minute. I actually thought about what this needed when I was laying in the bed. So, <laughs> but just like you might think that you have a project done, um, just like these little eggs that we made last night, the little Easter egg ornaments, um, these come from Magnolia Design Company, and um, I can give you the link if you're interested in this. And, of course, the stencils come from there as well, and I can get you the link in that. All you have to do is put link eggs or link stencil or link all your supplies or whatever, okay? Um, and that will definitely get me to where I can respond to you and let you know exactly how to get these. So anyway, I have these two packs of markers and these are also Magnolia markers. Um, this one has everything from like the pastels to some like the blue and purple, green, red, pink, white. Um, and then back up here, we've got the gold and the black. And then there is another pack that has four of the chalk markers and four of the ink markers. Um, and of course, this is the silver, gold, black, and white. And this uh, has like the gold is looking like a marigold gold and the silver, white, and black there. But it's got four of the chalk markers and four of the ink markers. So these are fun to use like for some finishing touches. So what I did, what I thought I'd do tonight is just show you how um, something like this that maybe doesn't show up as well. I put white on that pink. And even though it does show up, I thought if I went back and just added some embellishment with some of the ink markers, all of these are the ink markers. So these are permanent. You can use these on fabric as well. Um, and uh, you would have to heat set it. So I'll be glad to share those instructions with you. Just let me know what you need, okay, in the comment section. And I go back and I answer all the comments and I get those back to you um, as soon as possible. Uh, these are water-based, fade-proof, and non-toxic. So um, even if you wanted to do some projects with the kids, that's fun. But you do have to remember that these are permanent. <laughs> So if the kids get them on whatever they're wearing, um, you know, just keep that in mind. It's going to be there. Um, but I thought that this would be good to know, too, um, the surfaces. Um, so uh, it actually has, let me go back to this. It says uh, ceramic rock painting art. I know a lot of people like to paint on rocks canvas, porcelain, metals, wood, fabric, glass, and basically marks on anything. And it is permanent. Um, but you would, like I said, you would have to uh, heat set it on the fabrics um, and the ceramic 
as well and I can get you those information but definitely some of your like little fun projects that you're doing um, that you don't want to like do a bunch of uh, paint for this is very controlled only what you need and use comes out um, this also has a reversible tip one side is round and the other side is chisel so that's another little fun thing but I'm going to show you how you prime these, um, and all of these work the same way. It's got like a little um, bead inside, so you shake it up a little bit just to get those moving. And after you give it a good shake, just take the marker off, and you will just press down and hold until it primes. Okay, and then that will prime your tip. So this one I had already primed before I got on. So let me grab this purple since we did use the purple on this. So we'll be using the purple. Shake it, give it a good shake. And then you see how this is, um, come back over this way. Um, you see how that is has no purple color on the tip. Okay, so all you have to do, and let's see, I think you can see my paper towel, is just push down, kind of push down back and forth, and the tip is actually pushing in as well when you push down, okay? And what it's going to do is load that color on your tip. And then now you see that it's primed with the purple. And this will show you the difference in the tip as well. One side is rounded like this. Uh-oh. Like that. That's the rounded tip. And then this one is an example of the chisel tip. But it's reversible. So you can just, like, you don't have to choose, like, do you want chisel tip or round tip? It's just, it's reversible. Okay? So that's how that works. So I'm going to start with the pink. And I'm just going to kind of show you what I had in mind for this. Let me make sure you can see. Okay. So this one has a butterfly on it. And it's kind of hard to see, again, because I used the white paint. And if I had it to do over again, I would have chosen to use a different color. But what I thought I would do is I would just go in and just maybe add a little extra to it. So this has the butterfly on it so I thought okay I'm just gonna add some like pink where there's like those little inside lines and do the same over here where it's got the little lines um, and then maybe even do the inside of the butterfly and you'll see that I'm like not being super careful because it's kind of like a little freehand thing and just add to it. It's kind of like coloring. I'm just filling in that negative space. Okay. And do the same thing here. And I think I'm going to actually outline the butterfly. So it will show up as well. And this might actually take a couple of coats. So once that dries, I can go back and add to it. But that just kind of shows you how it makes that butterfly all of a sudden pop instead of it just being like the white. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of just very... Now I shake something fierce. So this may not be as easy for me as it might be somebody with a little bit more steady hand. So I'm going to do it in like little almost like little brush strokes, kind of like you'd paint your fingernails, you know. And I'm just following the edge of the stencil on the outside of the white. And then I'll come up and show you what this looks like. And I'm making little short strokes just going along the edge of that white. I'm going to come up in here, up in there, and then follow this in and go along the edge of this one on the wing. And I think I'm going to do the little antenna 
the pink as well. And you can see how already that's beginning to really pop. Let me make sure I can get this in that. Uh, there we go. Isn't that pretty? Tell me what you think about that in the comments. And like I said, these are going to be ornaments. So let's see if I back that up. And see, before you could barely even tell what it was. But I think that that really adds a lot to it and makes it show up so pretty. Now, there's also a gold and silver marker, and you could totally use those. And in fact, I think I'm going to use the gold one for the cross. Let's try that one. And I'm playing around with this. This is just like, you know, this is not something that you have to be super precise. This is something that you are doing to... Um, Pull that apart. There we go. And I'm going to prime my little paint end. And this one is the round edge. And that's all you have to do until the color comes down into the tip. You can kind of hold it there or you just kind of keep pumping. And I like to get that first excess off a little bit. And you see how that gold is now primed onto the end okay and you can stick that top on there so that you don't lose that while you're doing this but i'm going to do the cross that says this one says jesus is risen and i'm going to do the cross i'm just going to outline the cross And it is not perfect, but oh well. Then you could go in and you could use the little chisel top, but you see how that, that's like a glitter gold? And it just really makes that cross pop. And I love it. I think it's really pretty. I'm going to try to come up here and see if you can get a good look at it. That light is super loud. I think that maybe does it a little bit better. Let me see if I can turn the light down just a little bit. Maybe that's a little better. Or you have to hold your mouth right. Oh, <laughs> how about no light and you can see it better. <laughs> That's just my luck. So, there you go. Alrighty. I think that looks pretty. Um, and I might decide to go back and do it um, on the rest of them like that. The little chirp. This one. A cute idea is to do like the little, um, let me do the white polka dots. I'm going to show you that. Just get as creative as you want to get. I'm going to use this little, um, chirp ornament, and I'm going to get the white. I'm going to prime it. You see, I'm showing you this. So you can see one end is almost like a little bullet end, okay? And then the other end is the chisel end. And that's so that you can kind of write with the tip or you can get the like fat kind of lettering, like the um, calligraphy kind of lettering. So I am going to use the bullet tip the rounded tip because I want to make polka dots on my little chickadee. Okay, so I'm going to get that excess off and I'm just going to make like little quick polka dots. Okay. 
And this really needs, hey, well, there went that. I hit it too fast. I'm gonna have to redo that whole egg. So y'all get to see me mess up. That's a good thing. And I'll show you how I fix it. I'm gonna start back over and I'm gonna use a pink and I'll go back and I'll fix that. So there's my blunder for this evening. It's always good to show you that even whenever you practice these things, it was just kind of spilling out too fast for some reason. I think I got it slowed down now. Let me do this little bunny. I'm gonna just go along the edges. Oh yeah, for some reason those dots were really coming out fast and I don't know why. But we can fix them because that's what we do. Okay. Make his nose a little bit rounder. And I tell you what I'm going to do before I hold this up for you is I'm going to dry it a little bit. <laughs> So that shows you what that one looks like. And that just makes it show up so much cuter. Okay. All right. So that just gives you an idea about that. Um, and if you wanted to go around the edges with some glitter glue, that's cute too. I've got some of that somewhere, but I'm not going to try to find it right now. But I did want to show you again in case you missed it, the um, putting the jute through the little hole just thread it through and like i said i drilled my holes these do not come with the holes already drilled um i drilled them myself but it's super easy um and then these just make like the little ornaments and i just double tied these and then i frayed the ends um on that. And then just kind of squeeze these back and forth. And I just used my scissors, cut these off a little bit, and then just frayed the edges. Just make it look a little rustic. And there's that. Okay. So I'll have to fix my little chirpy thing. Um, I messed that one up. But um, anyway, that's basically what I wanted to show you tonight. Um, I wanted to show you a stencil I have coming up as we kind of start thinking about spring. Because I know I'm like all about the spring thing. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the stencils that we have coming up and hold on just two seconds. So I am a nut about pineapples. So I have this stencil coming up and don't forget you can use these like singles. So this for me is going to totally become a t-shirt because I love pineapples. And of course you can do all the fun flavors of color with that. Um, I think I showed this one to you last night. Bless our home with love and laughter. And in this kitchen, we make messes and memories. These are all year round kind of stencils. The pineapple can totally be all year round. This would make a beautiful piece for the front door because as you know, the Southern welcome symbol is the pineapple. Um, and then this one right here, this is the one that we're going to be doing on, um, I want to do a pillow, like one of the longer, almost kind of like a lumbar pillow, but 
not as skinny as a lumbar pillow. And I'll show you that. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is like this little wristlet that I have. And this comes from Magnolia. Just kind of clean this off a little bit. Move these off to the side. I hate I messed up my little egg, but oh well. That is like what happens sometimes. And I was going to show you this on the fabric. And I think I want to use... I want to use something that I can use all the time. Let's see. Ah, da, 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 da. Well, fooey. We're just going to use this. Because I'm probably going to put my makeup in it. <laughs> so let's use this. This is the Valentine stencils. And how was your day today? I'm sorry, I haven't even asked anybody anything. I've just gone to town over here. Um, put these markers away. Don't forget, you can also use these on fabric. Um, so you can do that. But these are wonderful. We'll get into like the silvers and golds and stuff like that more later on. But um, let's do... I think I'm going to do love and the lips. Um, and I'm Terry Hall, and I am T. Olive Home and Crafts. And I love to craft, and I hope you do too. And if you are not an avid crafter, I hope that this inspires you to become an avid crafter. Um, crafting is something that you can just get in here and try. And part of trying is making mistakes. I almost am kind of glad that I made that mistake just so that you can see it doesn't always turn out perfect. So um, I would want you to know that as well so that you're not afraid to get in here and try and think, well, mine doesn't always turn out perfect. Well, big news here, mine doesn't either. I do make mistakes. So I think what I'm gonna do is do them kind of like the love up and down, and I think I'm gonna put the lips to the side. Can you see that? Let me point this down just a smidge. Okay, I think you can see that. So if I have to bend down a little bit, you can still see it. Now I'm going to use the, um, it's really best to use parchment paper, but all I had is wax paper. So I'm gonna like, just use what I have. I'm going to put a piece in my wristlet just to protect the inside of it. And I'm just gonna do one side of this tonight. And um, I'm gonna show you, this is, this is the size of it. It's a nice size. You could totally use this as like a little run in the grocery store kind of thing if you have any kind of, I know most of the time they have digital coupons now, but if you have any kind of little coupons or if you have your change and your money or your little wallet or whatever, this is the perfect size and it has a really heavy, um, it's kind of like a ribbon, but it's not a ribbon. Um, it's, well, I guess it kind of is a ribbon, but it's more heavy duty. I don't know exactly what kind of fabric that is. That side's kind of shiny and that side has like a texture on it. And it has the zipper that goes all the way across and it's a little canvas bag. Cute, cute. 
So I'm going to slip this on the inside. I'm going to get it about the size that it is. So it does it. I'm just going to slide it down in here and smooth it out. Because when I use this ink, I don't want it to go through on the other side without me intending on it to do that. So I'm going to zip this up. And as we talked about before, when it's a new stencil, we put it on the little, um, whatever you call this thing, towel. That jute's got my nose itching. And I'm going to do this about three or four times since it's new. And I know you can't see that. Now you can. And this is like, it kind of fuzzes the stencil. So it doesn't stretch it when you're putting it on and off of your projects. And so I'm going to go ahead and lay this down here. Put it up. About right there. No rhyme or reason. Use your fingers and smooth it out. And then I'm going to use the lips. Now, one thing you do have to be careful about. And because I did it, I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, it's nicely fussed. Do you see how that still has like a little empty space right there across the top? Right there. I want to cut that off because if I don't and I get carried away with my ink, it's going to make a line on my project. So I'm going to cut that away so that you no longer have that little edge there. Okay, so I'm going to put the lips and y'all this will make a really cute gift. And I'm going to catty corner the lips just to give it a little bit of a, a looser, not so fixed and stuffy design on there. Okay. Rubbing this in really well. Okay. And I want to make sure that I am using the ink. And this is the ink. This is the one that once you heat set it, it's there. You can um, wash it, dry it, everything. And I'm going to, let's see, use this little piece here. And I'm going to grab a squeegee. And if this is the first time that you're joining me, um, just know that the ink is permanent and it will definitely stain whatever you're doing. So I've got on my little um, apron here and I'm going to swirl this around and get my fingers all nice and red. Because <laughs> y'all know me, if you've been watching, you know that that's what I do. I get in some stuff, and you do have to be careful because what's going to happen, I've got some little hand sanitizer right here. I'm going to go ahead and get that off. I don't want to touch my project and get straight ink on it, okay? So I'm going to use that on my fingers, okay? So I'm going to stir around in my red, and this actually has a sparkle to it, this red. You can't see it, but it has a little bit of um, a sparkle to it. So that's even going to make the lips and the love on here even more special. Okay, got that. Alrighty, and I'm just going to grab some of this. Because I'm just doing a quick project tonight, I'm not putting this in my little basins over there. And again, all you do is you butter the toast. That's what this is like. And this has got, like I said, a pretty, it's so pretty, the sparkle. And man, it starts showing up under the light like nobody's business. 
so pretty and you can pick up little canvas bags at the local um, hobby shops and things so you know you don't have to use magnolia um, surfaces you can find all kinds of surfaces you know even like the edges of pillows um, when you're doing the uh, pillows like for your sofas and stuff like that but you can also do it on pillowcases and that makes a wonderful wedding gift or shower gift hey everybody um, for weddings and showers that's perfect for that and even like the little onesies for babies you know that's also cute and I just love I wish y'all could see this how pretty that I know that you can't or can you? It's got like a little sparkle to it. Oh, it's so pretty. It is really pretty. This is the first time I've used this ink, this um, red ink with the sparkle. And I just love it. And you just, like I said, you don't want to press down. You're just literally just kind of smoothing it over. Wipe off the excess. Squeegee off the excess. Be careful because it's ink. You don't want to drop it. You don't want that dollop to get on your project. And I'm going to show you how pretty this is. Okay. Here comes the big reveal. Drum roll, please. I'll make sure I don't put my fingers in this. Here it comes. I love it. Oh my goodness. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? All right. And here comes the other part. Oh my gosh. What do y'all think about that? I love it. So cute, 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 cute. Now, what has got to happen is I'm going to let this dry for about 24 hours, okay? And then you will take parchment paper, or like I said, I'm using wax paper because that's what I am using. You know, that's what I had on hand. And you'll lay it down, and you'll put your iron, your regular cloth clothing iron, you'll set it on cotton without the steam okay and you're gonna kind of go back and forth back and forth and move it probably for about a good i'd say probably a minute on that um and that way it will heat set it then you can throw this in the washing machine and the dryer and it makes like the perfect little gift um also if you wanted to um Add some more to it. There's some more of those stencils right there that you could totally do. We have lettering. So if you wanted to add like a little monogram or even the name across the top. But I love that. How cute is that? It's perfect for your makeup. And look at how the lip gloss on those lips are sparkling. <laughs> it doesn't take much to make me happy. I don't get out much, I don't guess. <laughs> But um, anyway, tell me what you think about it, and um, I'll come back tomorrow, and I will actually demonstrate how to heat set this, because uh, I like to show you everything that I'm doing, um, so nothing will be a surprise, including making mistakes. And like I said, sometimes mistakes are good so that we can learn, and like I said before, too, I don't want you to think everything that I do turns out the first time. I make mistakes, too, and when you're live, it is what it is. You know, so um, that way I think it is more um, real and it also gives you a better understanding of what to do in case it happens to you. So I hope everybody's had a wonderful day. I hope that you enjoyed jumping on. If you didn't join me at the first, this is the finished product that we worked on and that I went back and added the carrots and the cottontail. Isn't it so cute? I just love, love, love it. And I bet... You know, because I didn't even use up all of my ribbon and everything. So, I guess if I added everything up, 
I might have $2 in this. That's crazy. I might have $2 in this. So this is something you could totally make and sell. Well, let me back that up. It's going to kind of depend on how many times you use that stencil as to how much the stencil would cost, you know, to do the project. But honestly, in, even if I added maybe the cost per use of that stencil and the paint, I'm, I'm still probably only in about three bucks. So I think that that's a good thing. But anyway, y'all have a fantastic evening. Please, if you think that I deserve any kind of like a little extra something, if you could do this or this, that would be wonderful. I would appreciate it so much. Um, and if you would sprinkle the video, that lets Facebook know that maybe you're interested in sharing this with your friends and family who you think might also enjoy this. But again, tonight's project is the little makeup bag and how fun is that so good night everybody i will see you tomorrow with a brand new little craft for us to do together um and hope you have a great day tomorrow see you later thanks for joining me by the way i really appreciate it and i love y'all hanging out with me talk to you tomorrow bye-bye